This is another video in our must have custom function series. This is about passing parameters. Passing parameters is an excellent way of getting information from one script to another. And this example is very similar to something, a real life example uh, from many years ago um, in passing parameters. And I'm setting this variable with all of these different values to this script because you can only send a parameter, one parameter. And then when you get that parameter, it's only going to give you one, but you have to parse it if you want more than one to go in the script. So this is how it was done many years ago in a real life scenario although the names have been somewhat changed. So I have all these variables passing it, and then we're just going to show the dialogue. So I'm just going to play this, and we get a custom dialogue of one of my favorite limericks. There once were two cats of killed Kenny. Each thought there was one cat too many, so they fought and they fit and they scratched and they bit, till instead of two cats, there. So it's, there's something wrong here. There's missing Instead of two cats, there weren't any, and it's not broken up correctly. So if I really wanted to do this right, I would need to put in the extra carriage returns in the specific places so that it would format correctly. I think there's one that goes here and just in, in a few areas. So I'll just do two. And then I noticed uh, that this was named incorrectly and it's actually supposed to be next 14 which is why it was missing one and i'm kind of belaboring this point just to show the painstaking process that it was because you had to know exactly the right order that it was in when you received the parameter so now I did this, but it didn't give me the carriage return here. And now I'm missing a bunch of words. And that's because the get value part in the receiving end here is going to see that return character within this first part here as the end of the value. So the next one is an empty value. It just gets really confusing and hard to track when you have so many uh, variables there's actually 35 here so an easier way to do this is actually with a custom function so I've already set it up here and we're simply doing name value pairs we're doing first name equals Stuart and so on of all of these and I'm just adding this as a value pair and I'm gonna put it in a global variable just so we can see how this works so I ran that script and let's open the data viewer and let's take a look at what this looks like we have send me so there is our parameter that we sent and we have these name value pairs and what we want is a custom function that can pull those out in any order that we want and we're gonna call this get named value here and we're trying to get a value paired with a corresponding key out of a complete value list. So we're gonna send in one name, which would be the key, and then the it's going to return the value of that key. So we have all of this here to accomplish that. We get the list of parameters. We actually add these at the end so that we know that we have uh, value pairs. We find out the starting position here of this list of parameters and the parameter name. So it's going to look at whatever we send it plus this and find that starting point in that entire value list. And then we can find out where the equal sign is based on the position of this, which comes right after it. And then we find out where the parameter ends based on that starting point. If we have the length is those two, and now we can get the middle part of that, which is the actual value. 
in which case we get the trimmed version of that and it returns the value of the parameter. So let's just check that in our little diagram here and I'm gonna add a couple of returns here so we can look and we probably should see what exactly they are. So let's just say we want to get the nickname. So we're going to do get named value. We have our value list and the parameter name. So I'm doing nickname and we're gonna do send me. We have to put this in quotes since it is text. And now we can put our ampersand there and it returns stew. So if we change this to, we'll do city instead whatever we put in here, if it is a value before the equal sign, what we get returned is the part on the right side of that. So very cool. And of course, if it's not in there, then it just doesn't return anything. So very cool way of accomplishing this. And I thought I would just show a real life example from our API course sample that we just released so you can see how it works. This is the sample file from that course and I've added a couple of layouts just so you could see how this is done and this had to do with integration between Stripe and the local database and we did it a different way but I wanted to just demonstrate how you could do it with this uh, parameter aspect. So suppose we had all of these fields on this form here and we want to get all of this data over to another form on this layout over here and i've practiced on a couple of these just to verify that it works so i'm just going to delete those so we have uh, all these fields here and you'll notice if we go back and forth they're in a different order so if we did go to next field or something, it may not work uh, the same way as we're gonna demonstrate here, but we want everything here to go to a corresponding field over here. Now this particular instance, you have to do a little bit of preparation and at least knowing I'm, I'm making a backup or a replica of the same table. So I'm using the same fields in this particular table, this uh, Stripe customer copy, as I am in Stripe customer. You'll see they are the same. So that makes it very helpful when you're doing this particular process and have everything tied into a script. And there's no relationships built on those particular table occurrences. There's Stripe customer copy and their Stripe customer, but this is going to a different table. So I don't even have them related. I am strictly going to pass all of this over to this table that has zero records with the use of this one script. So when I click the button and we go over, it is all there. So let's look at that script here. We used a form of it in this version, but we'll take a look at the easier way to send parameters and everything is based on variables there's nothing here that is table or layout specific except for this first one right here where i tell it which layout i want it to start on and this then every is based on uh, the rest of it so you have to make sure this layout is set up properly to handle it, but we're just getting the, the layout name. We are getting the table name of that layout. Then we're going to get the field names of that particular layout, store that in a variable, which is a value list, find out how many there are. If there aren't any, then we get out. And then we are going to loop through and we're going to get the current field name of the first value. We get the field value of that field name, and we're gonna add them to a variable in the proper format with that equal sign in between, and then the carriage return 
to make it a value list. Now you could put these pieces here inside of instead of the variable, but I just wanted to demonstrate uh, how these came about. And then we're just looping through all of the values from all fields. And so it's, it's creating this value list of everything that is on that layout with those value pairs. And then it's going to call this even easier way to get parameters. And we basically do exactly the same thing. We have this first line that is hard coded to know which layout we're going to. Everything else is all uh, a variable or a get layout table name, get file name and so forth. Very similar format to the easy way to send. And it's going to create a record. It's going to get the value from that parameter that we sent, get the field value. The only thing that we have to be a little careful of in this instance is the double colons because on that table, when we are doing set field by name, it requires the table name and the double colons and the field name. But we already know the table name based on the layout. So that still doesn't require any more coding below this line right here. And it's going to go through and set every field on that layout if it exists in that parameter list. We're getting all of the fields on the second layout. So if it wasn't sent in the first one, then we're not going to try and accidentally set a field that doesn't exist over here. We're only going to check this uh, based on the fields on this layout. And then we use that get named value custom function here to set all those fields. So that is, and then it goes back to where we were uh, before. So that is how this get named value can be quite powerful. It doesn't matter what order you send the parameters because this get named value finds it wherever it is in that list. So another huge bonus for that. And then it would be also uh, helpful to show one other part of this custom function, which is we'll go back to the best of the best to see this. And we added an additional one here of get parameter. And in this instance, it's using the get named value, the function we're just uh, demonstrating. But here it just gets the script parameter right away inside here and puts the parameter name so it can save an additional step of setting that variable that we did in ours. And then you do the same thing with the get script result. You can have, since you're passing a parameter back, uh, you can get the script result and use it the same way. So there are three right there that are very helpful in passing parameters. I wish I would have had these many years ago. And this also brings up the GFN and GTN custom functions, which because we mentioned this uh, in the script, it would be helpful to understand this. This particular one, we are looking at the double colon here that is in the field name of get field name. And then we get the second value of that because we replace that colon with the return character here because that's the actual field name, whereas the first part was the table name. And that's why the GTN is going to get the first value here after we substitute that because that will be the table name of that field. So it's another way of shortcutting, uh, saving an additional step of parsing that table name and field name, especially when you are getting parameters. So all of these work in conjunction together. Very helpful, very cool. Um, maybe many uses that could be done with this. I just showed a very simple one in this particular example of moving data back and forth, but it can be used in so many, many ways. So I hope that gives you some great ideas and how to utilize those fun and actually very simple custom functions, but very powerful 
as well. So please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more must-have custom functions. And we'll see you on the next video.